Hello and welcome to Science in 5, WHO's Conversations in Science. I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith. As countries move forward with national approval of vaccines, what does this process mean? Explaining this today is WHO's Dr. Marie Angela Simon. Welcome, Marie Angela. Thank you. Marie Angela, please explain the national approval process for us. There are different ways that a product, a health product, can enter a country. In, in normal times, we call it a licensing authorization by the National Regulatory Authority. Each country has a national regulatory authority, and it may be guided by different regulations, although the vast majority of them follow uh, international agreed parameters. Then when, uh, when you have situations like we have right now with the pandemic, many countries have what's called uh, an emergency use authorization, which is a, a, a temporary authorization for, for products that are still being finalized the test or being brought into the market for for specific situations. No vaccine gets into a country without some uh, authorization by the National Regulatory Authority. Mary Angela, explain the process of emergency approvals of these vaccines and how is safety ensured in this process? It's very important to, to highlight that no vaccine candidate should be uh, used uh, or issued an emergency approval at country level if it has not finished phase three trials. And why do we say that? Why does WHO keep saying that? Because it's during phase three trials that you do the assessment of efficacy and safety. When it comes to the assessment of the authority, it has already uh, data on both efficacy and safety. The job is not finished yet because uh, after this, you, in order to authorize at country level, you need to assess whether the, the vaccine was, like, let's say, well made. It has to, if it complied to what we call the good manufacturing practices and quality control and so on. And after it comes into the country, it's also monitored for any potential side effects, anything uh, that relates to, to to additional information that it didn't come through clinical trials. So this is to say that by the time it's authorized at country level, it has gone through a lot of scrutiny. So uh, it's very good to highlight that safety and efficacy will be uh, guaranteed by the process that we have put in place. Maria Angela, WHO also has its own approval process for vaccines. Uh, how does that work with national approval processes and what does that mean for manufacturers and countries? In the case of the COVID uh, uh, vaccines, WHO has issued what we call an expression of interest for an emergency use listing and potentially uh, in due time to a pre-qualification of vaccines. Why is this important? It's important because there are many uh, national regulatory authorities. There, there are many, many countries that don't have the technical capacity to do, to do the full assessment. You know, and also when you have like an international procurer, Traditionally, UNICEF buys vaccines for the world and PAHO buys for the Americas, right? So which assessment do they rely on in terms of, of quality, assurance of safety, efficacy? They rely on WHO's pre-qualification program. So this is a very fast-moving process usually, you know, to ensure that once a vaccine is proven to be safe and effective, that actually there are no regulatory barriers for these vaccines to enter, uh, to be deployed at country level, no matter whether this is a, a, a very mature national regulatory authority or a less mature national regulatory authority. So reliance on WHO's process is very important for many countries in the world. Thank you, Mary Angela. There you have it, Dr. Mary Angela Simon explaining the approval process for vaccines. If you find this information useful, please share with your friends and your networks. Remember, there's a lot of misinformation about vaccines out there. So be the source of scientific, evidence-based information. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stick with science.